Gun Boss Guns! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's that time of year again. Time for another round of preseason changes in League of Legends. Season 4, here we come! As always, I am Gendo Okeshi, here to walk you through the various changes to this vast game, and my god, there is a lot to talk about. As such, I will be breaking this discussion into three parts. The first shall be items, including the new support and jungle stuff, trinkets, wards, and a swath of other tweaks to existing things. In the next video, I'll talk about the map and how they've revised it, including how it looks, what's in it, and how some system works. I'd do that first, but some of that stuff isn't in the beta yet. Lastly, I'll try and go over the Season 4 runes, masteries, and summoner spells, none of which are on the beta right now. Speaking of, I would like to remind everyone that this is, in fact, all beta. Anything and everything could be changed. Heck, Riot might change their minds and not do any of this. Just keep that in mind. So, without further ado, let's talk items. First and foremost, two items have been removed. Mana Manipulator and Emblem of Valor. Let's be honest here, most of y'all weren't building Mana Manipulator on Summoner's Rift anyway, so it won't really be missed. It might come back later, but right now it doesn't build into anything, which we'll talk about in a bit, so it's not worth having around. For Emblem of Valor, let us offer a moment of silence. And then move on, because it lives on, or at least the icon does. It was co-opted into three new items built especially for supports. Each of these items belong to a new class of gold income items, which include these three, the things they build into, Avarice Blade, and the new versions of the top-level jungle items. You can only have one gold income item on your person at any time, as having more would be ridiculously strong. Each of these costs 365 gold to start, making it possible to start the game with one of these, a ward, and a potion, though masteries might give you more options, I don't know. Their second tiers all cost 850, and the final tiers all cost 2000. Convenient, though that may change of course. This is beta. The first is Philosopher's Pebble. Much like a miniature Philosopher's Stone, it gives health and mana regen. It also, however, gives gold every time a nearby minion dies that you didn't kill. Very convenient for passive supports. And it's any time one of them dies, not just when an ally kills it, so you aren't reliant on your ally being good at the game for yourself to profit. It becomes the new Philosopher's Stone, which is stronger than the old in all respects, gaining a passive gold gain in addition to a stronger harvest. Finally, it becomes Shirelia's Reverie, which you all know and love. It's losing the health gain and becoming slightly cheaper in order to gain more cooldown reduction and keep the gold bonuses from Philosopher's Stone. Very strong, I feel. The second is Cage's Pick, which has taken the old Lucky Pick picture. It's a strong choice for aggressive supports, especially ranged ones that will be doing lots of poking. It gives AP, mana regen, passive gold, and it's taken the pickpocket mastery and put it on an item. I imagine the mastery will be removed, as having both would be pretty insane. Poking an enemy with an attack gives gold, but is disabled when you kill a minion, making this definitely a support-only pick. The new Lucky Pick is a stronger version of that, giving more of everything and giving that bonus poke gold on spell casts in addition to basic attacks. I think I hear Lulu giggling with glee for this? Hmm. It still builds into Shard of True Ice, but no longer takes Mana Manipulator, hence what I mentioned earlier. My favorite part about this, though, is that you can target an enemy with the active ability, not an ally. I've wanted this to be the case since it came out last year, so I'm happy to see this change. Much easier to hit an enemy than it is to make sure an ally is and will stay in range. Now I've saved the strangest for last, Executioner's Emblem, the guy that stole Emblem of Valor's picture. It gives health and health regen, making it ideal for a tank. For gold, twice a minute your basic attacks will execute any minion below 200 health, provided you have an ally nearby. Whenever a minion dies by this effect, you heal the nearest allied champion for a percentage of your max health, and they also gain the gold for the kill plus 5. This is a really interesting effect, and I'd be interested to see a lane with two champions who both have this item. They would be quite beefy, well sustained, and still have plenty of gold between them. The healing portion of this passive is interesting as well as it can be useful in team fights, or especially if there are nearby minions. Some clutch plays might come from that. Reaper's Emblem is level 2, 
There's not much to say here, actually. It's just a bigger, better version. The final form, though, Martyr's Call, is bonkers. It gives you this really cool active ability called Health Bomb. You consume 20% of your current health to shield an ally for 10% of your maximum health for 4 seconds. After those 4 seconds, the shield explodes and deals magic damage equal to the original shield value. Pretty awesome. Keep your ally alive and explode people for trying. I'm waiting for Mundo or Cho'Gath to show up with this item and drop a massive AoE shield bomb on the enemy team. You may have noticed that all of these items have only one build path. This is likely in place so that Riot can better control their impact on the game. These can all be much more efficient than their previous counterparts, so what they became before could become pretty ridiculous if achieved too early. So, anything that built out of Embler of Valor, Philosopher's Stone, and Cage's Lucky Pick that I haven't already mentioned have been tweaked. Aegis of the Legion simply removes the Emblem of Valor step, so it builds straight out of Rejuvenation Bead, Cloth Armor, Ruby Crystal, and Null Magic Mantle. It was nice to have that early regen aura, but I suppose that in conjunction with the healing from Executioner's Emblem, it would be too much to sustain available in the early game. It also costs ever so slightly more, as does Locket of the Iron Solari to match. Frustrating, but acceptable and still strong. Banner of Command is replacing its Emblem of Valor with a Blasting Wand. So instead of the armor and regeneration part of its aura, it gets another 40 AP and another 10% cooldown reduction. This is an interesting change, and I'd like to see how it goes on a heavy pushing AP champion like Heimerdinger, who no longer has built in CDR. Elise's Miracle, which was already considered bad, has been made even worse. It builds only from Fairy Charm and Rejuvenation Bead, and hasn't been reduced in cost at all to compensate for the lack of gold gain used to build it. Worse still, the Aid passive has been removed, leaving it only with the This Disappears After 3 Levels thing. I can only see this getting play if you plan for extremely long games. Not entirely sure what's going on with this. Ohmwrecker, which has also been considered bad in the past, might actually see some play now. It's losing the health and mana regen from Philosopher's Stone and simply becoming cheaper. Finally! What held this item back, I feel, wasn't its stats, but its cost. By the time you made enough to pay for a 2850 gold item, the tower diving passive was hardly worthwhile, and at that price you could just get better stuff. At its new price point, I feel like maybe we'll actually see it played once or twice. Speaking of things that might see more play, Mikhail's Crucible. It's losing the health regen and some of its mana regen to become massively cheaper, almost a thousand gold. Pay only 720 on top of my Chalice of Harmony to get a cleanse and a heal? Heck, I might start taking this on my AP casters now. The Merillonomicon is exactly the same as before, only replacing the Lucky Pick with an Amplifying Tome. It's a little disappointing not to get the extra gold on the way there, but this item is still super efficient in all respects. The new Twin Shadows is also mostly the same. It builds out of two books and a Null Magic Mantle to give you 10 more AP at the cost of 100 more gold. It's also still very efficient, and I expect it to see some play as well. I mean, who's not going to play with those spooky ghosts? Will of the Ancients is the only former lucky pick item that's changed significantly. It builds now from a Hextech Revolver and two Fairy Charms, giving bonus mana regen, cooldown reduction, and a selfish 20% spell vamp instead of the aura it had before, all for 550 less gold than before. Not honestly sure I like the loss of the aura, but it didn't really see much use of late, more replaced by those seeking the cheap efficiency of the selfish 20% from the Spirit of the Spectral Wraith. As that no longer has spell vamp, it can be achieved here instead. This will likely see some use, as those who want spell vamp really want spell vamp. I guess since I mentioned Spirit of the Spectral Wraith, we should go ahead and talk about those items now, huh? Riot's goals here seem to be to make these items as unattractive as possible for non-junglers, and making them really useful in the jungle. Spirit of the Spectral Wraith, as I mentioned, is losing its spell vamp component. Instead of building from a Hextech Revolver, it's got a Fiendish Codex, plus the Spirit Stone. It gets its health regen back and loses some mana regen so that it matches the other spirit items. In addition to 10 extra ability power, it gets two new passives. The first returns 5% of spell damage dealt to monsters back as health and mana. 
Combine this with the runes carried by big monsters, and past this point, junglers like Amumu should never need the blue buff again. It should keep them topped off near max all through their clears. It still costs 2000 gold though, so it's not like he doesn't have that early weakness anymore. In addition, it gets the Bounty Hunter passive, giving extra gold for killing monsters and champions. Great for any heavily casting jungler. Spirit of the Elder Lizard is losing a little base AD, but the Incinerate passive is getting stronger to make up for it. To keep it from going crazy on non-junglers though, or help anyway, it now only works on any physical damage source, not any non-dot spells or basic attacks. Much narrower focus, and less useful for certain AD carries. I'm looking at you, Ezreal. It's also gaining that same Bounty Hunter passive for free. Lots of money for junglers incoming. Spirit of the Ancient Golem, I'd say got nerfed, but it's still really good. Who doesn't like tenacity? It's losing 150 health, but gaining a new passive. Conservation makes ganking less of a gamble. Part of the risk was that if your gank failed, you missed out on a lot of gold from farming the jungle. Now, every 1.5 seconds or so, you'll gain a stack of conservation, and you'll get up to 30 bonus gold based on how many stacks you have the next time you kill a large monster, which will, of course, consume your stacks. Pretty neat! Lastly, we've got Madrid's Razor and Riggle's Lantern. Both are losing 5 armor, which is strange considering the new jungle is tougher, but we'll talk about that next time. Mainly, I want to talk about the lantern here. It builds from Madred's razors and two daggers. That's right, no vampiric scepter, no lifesteal or attack damage. It's only going to give you attack speed. To make up for the lost lifesteal though, the main passive is giving you 10 health on hit versus monsters. Kind of like a bigger Doran's blade that hits faster. Its other new passive is crazy. 40% bonus gold from monsters. This is crazy. This will hopefully allow for some carry junglers to function at reasonably competitive levels, such as Master Yi, Trindamir, and who knows what else could make this work. Oh, and the ward active has been buffed back up. It's now a full 180 seconds, like any normal ward. You might notice though that the text I have here says Stealth Ward. Yeah, wards are getting changed. Significantly. Normal site wards are now called Stealth Wards. This is because they become invisible. But that's normal, I hear you cry. Yes, well, vision wards aren't going to be invisible anymore. They stay in plain sight for all to see, but will have slightly more health to compensate, last indefinitely until destroyed, and are cheaper. Currently, they cost 100 gold on the PBE, but Riot's notes suggest they should cost 75, same as stealth wards. Furthermore, there are now ward limits per player. Each player can only have three stealth wards and one vision ward active at any given time, so it can't just be the support that wards anymore. Everyone has to. Old wards will disappear if you place over your limit. This ward limit is kind of like the sightstone limits, except of course it applies all the time. In fact, sightstone and ruby sightstone no longer have limits on the number they can have placed they are only limited by the number you have in play already. This is a significant buff to the basic sight stone, and if you're worried that Oracle's Elixir will ruin this, well, that's not in the game either. To compensate for all these changes and to help people out who couldn't normally afford wards, we have a brand new item type that is arguably the most exciting change to the game. I present Trinkets. Trinkets are free, and fill their own special item slots, and have their own special rules. Everyone can have a trinket, but only one trinket at a time. Trinkets can't be used during the first 90 seconds of the game, before minions spawn that is, and selling a trinket will put whatever new one you get on cooldown for 3 minutes. There are 3 trinkets, the warding totem, the scrying orb, and the sweeping lens. Each one will evolve into a greater version when you reach level 9, and can then be upgraded for gold. The warding totem is simple. It places a ward, and the leveling is straightforward, lasting for 1 minute and 2 minutes respectively. That ward counts toward your map moment, by the way. It's the only trinket with two different monetary upgrades. One that will give a full 3 minute stealth ward, and one that will give a vision ward. The interesting thing is that the cooldown never changes. 
so with the stealth version, you can temporarily have two wards out with the one item. For maximum warding in the minimum item slots, I suspect most supports will end up with a Sight Stone and the Vision Totem, filling all their requirements without spending much further cash. It may also be useful in the early game for solo laners protecting themselves from ganks. The Scrying Orb and its upgrades work like a miniature clairvoyance, letting you see an area for a short period of time. The area is small and the distance also fairly weak, but the final Farsight Orb could be quite useful in later stages of the game to check objectives and spot where the other team is. I suspect at higher levels at least one of these on a team will be handy to have. Lastly, the Sweeping Lens and its upgrades are our replacement for Oracles. On activation, all invisible traps and wards immediately around you are revealed and disabled. The final form will even reveal invisible champions, so you won't be entirely screwed over by Akali and Shaco in teamfights. You just need to know when to use it, so it adds some level of skill to this play. I suspect there will be popular on roaming champions, especially junglers, but I also suspect that either the AD carry or support will have one. One of these in the duo lane to counter the enemy support's warding. Alright, finally, there are two other major item changes to speak of. Doran's Blade and Longsword. Both have been made cheaper, but the Doran's Blade has been made weaker. Arguably, this is so that with the aid of a potion, it will have some regeneration and thus compete better with the other Doran's items, and also fall in line with all other starts. There are no longer any items that you can buy and not have money to buy anything else with. To me, this feels like it defeats the original purpose of having the Doran's items, being an all-in sort of option to start the game, but hey, this is the direction where it's moving. The change to the on-hit health restore is noteworthy, another way to help melee champions compete with ranged. More needs to be done than just item tweaks for that, but it's a nice gesture. The cheapening of the longsword makes it so that you can start with either three potions or one and a ward. Pretty convenient. It also reduces the cost of some, but not all, items that build from it, which you can see here. Some websites are reporting a lot more items that build from it have reduced cost, but they aren't appearing live in the beta, so I'm not including them. And that's that. Whew. So much stuff. Thanks for watching everyone, join me on the next handy dandy guide for changes to the map and game flow. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. Speak up in the comments below if you have your own take on the changes or some questions. We're all here to learn. Subscribe for future content, including champion guides, gameplay guides, and other possibly not lol content. Follow me on Twitch for streams and Twitter and Facebook to see what else is going on. Till next time, I've been Gin, and you've been watching me talk about a video game.